What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another Brood War cast here. Another daily dose of the good old Brood War. We've got Jadong here in the top center. His opponent will be Rain down here in the bottom left. These two players met on ladder twice. And we're going to be casting both of those games here today. This was played on January 30th of 2024. So hot and fresh. And we have casted a little bit of rain recently. And I kind of noted in those games that he wasn't looking totally up to snuff. But he has been playing a lot. He's been preparing. We're just a few days away from the qualifier for this new season of ASL. So... He's getting back into shape, and one thing you can say about Rain is that despite, you know, not practicing really heavily, not uh, putting a huge amount of hours in in the regular season, once this guy gets into his practicing shape, once he gets back into good form, you gotta put some respect on his name. He is absolutely fearsome. We'll see what he looks like here against Jadong, who is in a bit of the same boat. I don't think it's to the same degree as Rain. I think that Jadong still does play a lot during the year, although he doesn't take it as seriously as he used to back in the Kespa era. That is for sure. Since he came back from the army, I think he's gone into a bit more of a holding pattern. He's not as hungry as he once was to get a win in the ASL or something like that. He's just kind of coasting along for the most part. At least that's been my experience from watching him uh, play in both the ASL and in these latter games. I don't think that he's truly as thirsty for an ASL victory as somebody like, for example, a Sharp or some of these er other Zerg players, even ones that have got big wins before, like a Queen or something like that. I feel like Queen really puts in the effort to become better and better. Or someone like Hero, who's never gotten an ASL victory. You can see the desperation in his eyes. He really wants to get one of those trophies for himself. He's been working super duper hard to uh, grab one of those victories and really solidify his name. Been such a top contender for such a long time. But just hasn't quite made it through yet. Now, Rain here, he's got a full scout of Jadong's main. He knows what's coming. He sees the gas has started to be mined here. He didn't see or didn't stick around long enough to see a lair start. He sees the third base here. He's going to get chased. Out behind the mineral patches. Trying to find a way to uh, avoid these links, but great job by Jadong getting that damage and eventually does manage to pick that off. It's like the Overlord venturing a little bit too close to the front here and a Hydralis Den is starting. So first game of the series here, Jadong gonna open it with a Hydralis bust and this is a vertical natural. So like, this is the best the, the most optimal uh, wall to bust, and it was also a forge fast expand, so I think he's going to be feeling pretty good about trying to bust here. Now, <clears throat> there's been quite a few lings produced. There's going to be enough lings to actually surround and kill both of these two zealots. With eight lings, I think the rule of thumb is like three lings per zealot, but four lings per zealot will really slap these two zealots away. However, he's not actually chasing them. He didn't, I think, see. Did he miss that, that they headed north? I think he might have missed it. And now the Zelt's going to make it here into the third base unhindered. And he's going to find out very soon that there is no link speed. And when you see no link speed here, I think you got to be very suspicious as the Protoss player. He's going to go for the drone. He doesn't quite get that drone. Overlord here in the main is going to be cleared out by a Dragoon. And the Dragoon means that there's not gonna, going to be a very quick uh, Stargate here. Oh man, it's so hard to stop this Zealot from getting into your main. And it looks like he may just be able to get all the way in here. 
barely not good surround there from Jadong. Managing to prevent the scout here on the Hydra stem, but there is a layer coming, which is quite interesting. Not sure why the layer is on the way here. Atchery coming down as well, so I guess he's just gonna go Hydralisk. Go for some Hydralisk, but not an actual bust, it's looking like. Just a, maybe a wall kill maneuver here from Jadong. With a very strong follow up from this. And a couple of cannons are coming down, man. If he had actually pulled the trigger and gone full in with this Hydralisk bust, I think he might have actually killed Rain here. Oops, making a mistake with the uh, Dragoon there at the front. Yeah, Rain would have lost the wall in very quickly, and I think he could have dove on these cannons. But right now, back at home, just f full on drone production here for Jadong with only three Hydras here. He will be able to get this forge, I think, but that's a quite a lot of zealots and zealot speed is about to finish. So look at that, backing away. Jadong not gonna risk it. Instead, he's just gonna focus on this macro here. And let's see what kind of counter punch Rain can come out with. He did end up going for the Stargate a little bit later. Don't often see that. Uh, Dragoon into Citadel and then into Stargate. It is a bit of a, a different style of getting into uh, mid game here. And Jadong, I mean, he's getting a Spire for himself. He kind of revealed that he went Hygelisk. Now he's gone for two Sunkins at each base. And he's gonna be switching into Mutas, I think, coming up here. Running over towards the natural. Doesn't want to take a fight there. Hydras are going to make their way back. One does get picked off, though. Zealot plus one is done. Plus one is on the way here for the Hydralisk. But I think we're going to have a burst of Mutas popping out here pretty soon. A few more Lings here in the natural as well, just to block. Make sure that these, ling uh, these Zealots can't run by into the main base. No third gas just yet. Which is making me wonder how serious he might be about going into Mutas here. Storm on the way. A DT coming out as well. I gotta say, a very interesting opener from both players. The way that they've kind of maneuvered this early game. Definitely far from standard. But uh, we're getting into more of a standard mid-game now. With some Corsair harassment coming out, we will see some Scourge and a few Mutalists gonna come here as well. Going after Overlords, he may be able to get two. Scourge are like, I don't know where they're going, but he will be able to pick off, I think, both of these Corsairs. Look at that, getting both the Corsairs. That was a beautiful move by Jadong leading over here with the, cor with the Scourge and then coming in with the group of Mutas to pick off those Corsairs, that was a great, great play. There are two cannons in the mineral line. Another cannon warping in down here at the natural. It's going to be difficult to get in there, but with no uh, Corsair, well, with one Corsair here, he's not going to be able to do much to push away these Mutas. It's going to have to come down to some good storms there. Nice storm. Didn't actually kill any of these uh, Scourge, though, in that pack. So the Scourge are still going to be a threat here. It's like uh, both Scourge are still alive. Zealot counterattack has been stopped. Probes being transferred here are going to get caught. Looks like that one Corsair did go down. So the two Scourge getting used up there to kill one Corsair. Very frustrating stuff for Rain. Who's trying to balance, you know, aggression here with defense. Does want to put some pressure on this Zerg player. But doesn't want to lose too many probes back at home at the same time. Nearly evening out the worker count now. He's going to bomb in another couple of Scourge onto this Corsair. He's going to go after this last Corsair here. Here comes the Storm. Not too bad of a Storm. And the Mutas are very, very low, but they do survive. See, just 12 HP on one of those. However, now the Hydralists are coming out in huge number here. He's already got those upgrades. He has a plus one complete. Should be starting plus two here any moment. And some Lurkers are being morphed in. So the next stages of the game are going to commence here in just a few moments. And what will Mini do? Or not Mini. I, 
His name says Mini. So frustrating. Rain, what will Rain do here next? Is he going to go and push for a third base? That's what it's looking like. I don't think he has the muscle to take out Jadon just yet. And also, he does not have the uh, vision. We've only just now got a robotics, and there's the observatory warping in. So he cannot fight Lurker right now. And maybe Jadon can use this to his advantage. Push across the map. Get some Lurkers down here. And try to deny this third base before the observers come out. We'll see. It's going to be tight here because the observers are already on the way. I just coming forward here. We do have one DT heading up towards the center left. Lurker's going to burrow on high ground right now. Will force the cancel here on the third base. This is a great play from Jadong. The speed of these Lurkers after the uh, Mutalisk aggression. Really, really on point here. And you can see he's keeping his money very low. Even though he's got 50 drones here. Even with that 50 drone count, still able to keep his money low. And now we're going to see the Templar start to move forward. He is going for the Observer. He gets the Observer. Big pick off there. Observer being sniped this early is super annoying. We only have one more Observer and another one in production. If Jadong snipes this Observer here too, things are going to get really messy for... Uh, rain, but I love what Jadong is doing. This is the, the type of style that I like to do. Uh, this is the kind of position that I like to get um, as, a Proto as, as a Zerg player against Protoss on this map is this high ground lurker containment is super, super strong. He's going to try and shove through right here, right now. Rain, not content to sit back. He's got one observer. It goes down. The Observer falls and everything will have to retreat. He brought too many Templar up here onto the high ground. They are going to get gunned down as he tries to back up. Jadon just ripping forward here now, sending the Lurkers out to the front and continuously pushing here with the Observer or with the uh, Hydra. There we go. He picks up the Observer again. One more Observer does pop out here and there's a cannon in range of one of these Lurkers. So it looks like Rain may just barely be able to hold on, but... Look at the amazing macro from Jadong coming across the map with legions of Hydras here behind this first attack. The uh, Nexus is starting to get low. There's only a small contingent of Dragoons here. And where are the next units coming out? Only six more Dragoons about to pop in. This six Dragoons is not enough to beat this army that's already here. And Jadong just gonna rip through this Nexus. That will be going down in no time flat. A great layer-based play here from Jadong, utilizing every different type of unit that the layer allows you to gain to get here. And he's going to snipe down those last two observers, the uh, Dragoons here, fighting the best that they can, but they will be forced back. He has a pretty good lead on upgrades, just a one upgrade lead, excuse me, actually. I thought that we didn't have that plus two just yet, but we do have that finished. So Jadong here hitting a great timing, and now he can sit back up on the high ground, reset up this Lurker contain, and wait for either Rain to try and push out again, or just go for the killing blow here. He's going to come down with a bunch of Lurkers, shoving forward here, crushing through Rain's final defense. Beautifully done uh, this game by Jadong. You know, the harassment with the Midas was fantastic. Killed a lot of probes. He sniped those first two Corsairs really, really well. Kind of boxing them in and forcing the kills on that. And then the transition into Lurker was picture perfect. Keeping his money very, very low. I gotta say, Jadong looking absolutely out of this world good in game number one. Let's see if he can do it again in game number two. Well, lovely to see Jadong performing here in this ladder battle against one of the strongest Protoss we have, of course. I should reiterate that Rain is getting into form. He doesn't have much time left, though, to regain that form. Only a few more days until the ASL qualifier. And if he wants to qualify and do well in ASL, he's going to have to do better than that last game. It seemed like he had an interesting build. He had a kind of messing with a few different ideas there, but 
Really, Jadong took full control after that early game with the faked Hydralis bust. And the transition very quickly into Lair and Spire. It worked out beautifully. And now we're going to have to see, I think, Rain pull out something a little different. It looks like a gateway first build this game may be coming down. Let's see if that's what he's indeed doing. Gateway first here at the front. Going to send that probe after the gateway. Go find out where Jadong is. Maybe try to harass some drones with this probe. Two probe hits, two zealot hits is all it takes to kill a drone. So you can come in and get, you know, three, four probe hits onto one of these drones. By the time the zealot gets there, you might still be able to two hit it with that zealot. Crash tank there at the corner. What do we have over here? Actually, nothing. That's funny. The OP spawn down here in the bottom right with the crash tank. Here we go. The harassment begins. This is very difficult to handle. Uh, if the player is a bit better than you, it can be really, really uh, painful to try and hit your build while microing against this probe, harassing your drones in the mineral line. But it's something that just takes practice. And Jadon did a good job just immediately turning the the drone to shoot the moment that the probe comes in for the attack and then going directly back to mining not chasing the probe not trying to get additional shots on it just as soon as it comes in attack it and then go back to mining immediately if it comes back in again you can attack it again and you can switch your drone like over to this patch and move this drone as it comes back over to this patch and get like a healthier drone to the outside if you need to as well uh, those are all techniques for dealing with this type of early probe harassment and first zealot is out here on the map second zealot as well but we don't have rain trying to move forward here instead rain is actually backing up he sees that there's no third base he's a little bit confused but the third base is actually down here at the bottom right uh, kind of interestingly i'm going to change the color here let's go to red zerg uh, so that we can see a little bit better brown on this map should be uh, illegal i don't think that's uh i mean orange is not allowed on this map i know uh, if you try to lock in orange color on apocalypse it's not going to allow you to do that but brown really should be blocked on a lot of different maps but especially this one red zerg it is the third base is actually down here which is really going to throw off rain here it seems Rain went back with his zealots. He's being very careful here, making sure he's got the full wall. He's waiting for his forge. Oh, he's got his forge. He's waiting for money here to start a cannon. He's going to start a cannon here any second. Oh, no, he's not going to start a cannon. Interesting. Just kind of moving around here with the probe, looking for an opportunity to run back into the main. Not going to have it here. Not just yet, anyway. So, again, checking up here for the third base, but not seeing it. I, if I'm rain right now and I don't know what's coming, I might be thinking that this is just a straight-up mutalist play, like a two-hatch muta play, and I might end up going for a double Stargate as a response to that. So let's see if he is going for that double Stargate. We've got one Stargate so far. We are getting the upgrade here. Is that a second Stargate? No. No second Stargate just yet. He may end up building a cannon here in the main. Just in case there was like a really quick... Uh, Spire, I think he did see like the, the, the quickness of the lair. So he's not too, too worried about, you know, losing to a very quick two hatch uh, Spire play, but... We don't have... This is funny. We don't have plus one coming here. No plus one. I wonder what Rain is thinking right now. Did he did he suss this out? Did he realize that there must be another base on the map? That must be it, right? He must have realized... Okay, there's no way that Jadong only has one base right now. He must... It's not here. It must be maybe down in the bottom left. Maybe this base. You know, maybe down here. But he's not super worried. He's adding on two more cannons just to be safe. 
But back at home, you can see that Jadong has no intention of doing a Hydrilis bust this game. He's going to be able to drone up really, really heavily here. We've got the Citadel coming up now. So not the same build as last time from Rain. This time he is going to get in here and seize the second gas starting. Sees that timing. Spire is now done. We should have Scourge on the way in one of these eggs. Yeah, there they are. Scourge is going to be popping out here any second. He loses one Overlord. But look, okay, the Corsair is heading down towards the bottom left. He is going to find one Overlord over here. Oh, did we lose that Corsair? Oh, no. The Corsair there was lost. That is a pain, man. That is a real pain for uh, Rain here. And will he lose this Corsair as well? Oh, it's so close. He does lose that. That is not worth it, by the way. Rain losing two Corsairs here. Right at the beginning of the game. Brutal. Brutal position here for Mr. Rain. He's looking to try and get in here, but I mean, there's nothing here for him. We've got drones to block. We've got lings to block as well. Some mutas are starting to pop out. We're going to put down an evolution chamber in the front. This is a beautifully SimCityed area here for Jadong. He's going to be making that Hydralis now finally and coming in with some Scourge. Oh, he gets another Corsair. Oh my gosh, Rain. What is going on with this guy? Dude, I don't think Rain's going to win this season of ASL, guys. I'm going to call it right now. I think he is uh, looking a bit washed up here. I hate to say it because he is just such a beast the majority of the time and especially during ASL season he can be so incredibly scary but in this case man he is just getting completely dominated here losing all of his early zealots now gonna be forced back I guess this is partially the mind game of Jadong kind of working out well but Honestly, there's no excuse for losing your first three Corsairs like that. That was brutal. First Corsair over here in the natural. Second Corsair down here. Third Corsair here in his main. Losing your Corsair in your main while you've got cannons to defend? That is just unacceptable. Absolutely unacceptable. And now a Dark Templar here. I'm going to be checking for that fourth base. It's not going to come though. We may try to run into the natural. He might be able to run by this sunken colony, but it's going to take a lot of damage there. Just barely managing to slip by. We don't have any uh, overlord here in the main, which is a problem, but the overlords are on the way. Two drone kills, three drone kills. Not bad. Not bad. Might be able to delay this even further. We have overload speed on the way. So that's going to be coming here relatively soon. Overlord... Just about in range here. Should be able to track down and kill the Dark Templar now. And especially once that Overlord speed is done. We're almost finished. Uh, Hyd Hydralis range while flying out with just five Corsairs. This man has balls. Gonna come in and kill a couple of Overlords here in the natural. And start to run away immediately because, man, this is gonna get very, very dangerous. He is getting a ton of damage here with the moving shot. The Scourge should be able to connect. There's one Corsair going down. So again, trading out just a couple, a couple of these units. Oh, and another, another Corsair goes down. That was beautifully done by Jadon. Absolutely fantastic, the control there. It's like the DT did finally get picked off down in the bottom corner. So again, man, trading out those overlords for a few Corsairs is amazing for Jadong. And this is still a massive threat. Five more uh, Mutas on the way here. And it feels like we got to stop making Corsairs and just switch into Dark Templar. Uh, get a Dark Archon out here or something. He's going to go after the Storm. Does manage to pick off the Templar, but the Storm was very, very good. And now the Corsairs can actually chase this down a little bit. However, only two cannons. 
at this position. We need to bring out the Templar here. I just moving forward, getting themselves into position. Oh, he actually has to kill his own <laughs> evolution chamber here because he was having to mine with like five drones on gas and he's actually continuing to mine with five drones on gas, but it's like he'll be able to move those over to maybe take another base here or something soon. Oh, the Corsair is flying through the Hydras here. Gonna lose two Corsairs there for free. A lot of probes going down here in the main now. And the Mutas are just going to fly out. So that was brutal damage once again. Jadon taking a big advantage in this game. And if he wants to, he can just sit up here on the high ground. Wait for his plus two. Wait for some... Uh, oh god, great storm there, but actually killing a lot of his own probes as well. Dropping down to just 61. Wait for lurkers here on the high ground, but actually he's going to start to push forward. Ooh, great storm down here. I think that was the only storm available. So, uh, no more storm for now. Just zealots and dragoons are going to have to uh, clear this. Along with the cannons, it looks like they're going to be able to do so. No lurkers in the mix once again, so... Not having those lurkers means it is possible to still fight here with these zealots. Zealots are starting to run out of that HP though. Another storm goes down. More and more hydras coming here. Jadong really trying to push the issue, but it seems like Rain has retaken this high ground. And as long as he's standing here on high ground, he can defend this position. I just backing up once again. A fourth base is on the way here, but this was a little bit unfortunate for Jadong. I thought he was going to do the same play as last game, which is set up a big lurker contain up here and kind of pick rain apart. But this time he was a little bit more greedy. He tried to just run in and bust and win right then and there. And it did not work out. He did a lot of probe damage. And usually after you do probe damage, it's much better to go for a longer play and let that probe damage start to work in your favor here, though. He threw everything into that army and lost his whole army. And now he's got almost nothing left to finish this defense. And Rain is actually shoving in emergency sucking call. And he's going down right now. Mutalists are popping out here. But that's not going to be enough to hold on. And GG is called. Shadong taps out. And Rain takes a victory there. Wow. That was... Um, that was rough, man. Jadong, it seemed like he had an amazing position. Like, if we zoom back and go to the point when Jadong had this high ground with a ton of lurker or with a ton of Hydra up here, you no, know, he was picking off Templar. He was flying in, killing a bunch of probes. Things were looking fantastic for him. But this one attack down the ramp to try and kill this third base was his undoing that's an unfortunate way to go but that's the way the cookie crumbles guys gg rain takes game number two and that's going to be it for this daily dose of brood war i'll see you guys in the next video